Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is The Following Total and today we're back with another top 5 list. This time, we're not going to be doing the top 5 best weapons, we're not going to be doing the top 5 worst weapons, but we're going to be doing the top 5 weapons that are worth the grind. And when I mean worth the grind, I mean do will help you through the grind. Of course, this video has been made possible for friends at Discord, meaning that if you haven't liked, subscribe, or join Discord, I highly suggest that you do. But that said, let's get started. Before we even start, let's talk about what I mean by worth it. Number one, this weapon has to have the ability to do recently good damage for the level that you're getting it, and this weapon is better than some of the weapons that you later unlock, and in some cases this weapon is really good, and this weapon is cheap, is worth it, like literally the level that you get this weapon, these are weapons that you should 100% upgrade and stuff like that, and some weapons are even transferable to other campaigns. But that said, without further ado, let's get started with the list. In the number 5 spot, we have the Type 100 SMG. Now the reason why this thing is on the list is because of a lot of reasons. Number 1 reason is basically it has no recoil. Number 2 reason is the fact that it's a very good early SMG for the Japanese, and I would say it is the best SMG for the Japanese until you get the SIG-1920, and the reason is very damn simple. Number one, it has a very high hit power, um, it literally can almost 3 shot a person, which is insane. The rate of fire is decent for a Japanese SMG, which is amazing. It has a bayonet, which is even more impressive, and in fact that it has a like, medium size magazine. Now, of course, it's basically no... MP28 7.62 in the sense that it has 50 round magazines, but this thing is more than enough to 3 shot kill a person, and as of right now, in the Pacific, this is the only SMG that is very good for the early game, and I would highly suggest that you get this thing because this thing is absolutely amazing, not only because it has all the three things that I said, the recoil, the bayonet, and the damage. It also has another thing, which is the thing that this is cheap. And when I mean cheap, I mean quite cheap for the fact that you're gonna be using this until the late game. And for me, personally, I use this thing until the late game, and I'm, as a matter of fact, still using this thing in the Japanese campaign. But that said, that is the, the number 5 spot, the Type 100 SMG. In the number 4 spot, we have the Thompson M2128, and the reason why this is on here is because unlike all the other Thompsons in Allies Tunisia and Allies Normandy, this Thompson is the only one that you can use properly and has good rate of fire, good reload, like the rest, but it also has good sights, and when I mean good sights, it really does have good sights. And a lot of Thompsons are plagued with the fact that they have terrible sights, this Thompson is not the worst Thompson in the sense that it has terrible size. As a matter of fact, I would say it's one of the best Thompsons besides the 50 round Thompson and in terms of size, the 50 round Thompson is not even worth the M128. Now, the reason why I really like this gun is because it's basically a Thompson, which means 8.2 damage or whatever, uh, very high damage for an SMG round, and this is very, very interesting. Now, of course, the only big thing that I have with this is this Thompson isn't really, let's just say, um, unlocked at the early game, which means you do have to grind a lot to get it, but in my idea, this is one of the better Thompsons in the sense that you can actually see where you're shooting at, and honestly, in some cases, I'll actually get more kills with this Thompson than the 50 round Thompson, which is amazing. But that said, let's move on to the number 3 spot, and that is instantly going to be the PPT-3438. And the reason why, well, the rest of these are going to be very close is the PPT-3438 is very, very, very close to the other top two, because I literally had a hard time putting the PPT-3438 at number 2, or number 1, or number 3. I end up going for number 2 because, well, let's just say the Soviets have a lot of good SMGs in Moscow and the PPD-3438 is not going to be the best one you're going to get, but it is the definitely the better one. For the early game, this thing is absolutely amazing. It will shred through people like nothing has happened, and the fact that the PPD-3438 literally has a 71 round magazine makes this thing almost unstoppable. And basically, think of a... PPSH-41 at the early game, or PPD-40, and you already know what I'm talking about. Unlocked at level 11 or something close to that, the PPD-3438 is literally gonna smash all German weapons aside, because this thing is better than any German weapon that you can get. With that said, that is the PPD-3438, literally nothing I can really say about this. Um, this is really worth your money, really worth your silver orders, really get this, highly suggest that you use it, max it out, and give it to every, almost every one of your soldiers, because it's really that worth it. 
But that said, let's move on to the top four. And like I said with the PPD 3438, I had a really hard time judging this because this really had a lot of good things going for it. And that is the M1 Grand. And the reason why the M1 Grand is up here is because it is better than the rifle before and the rifle after. Let me explain. The M1 Grand is an 8 round semi automatic rifle, which is really good firing and it's very well known. The good thing about the M1 Grand is that it's very fast firing, with the exception of only having 8 rounds, which is shouldn't be a really big deal. But here's where the best things come in. The M1 Grand has a lot of good attributes, but what makes it even better is the fact that the Americans only have the M1 Grand. And let me rephrase it, the Johnson is an upgrade of 2 rounds, the M1 Grand has a bayonet, and the Johnson has 2 extra rounds, of which the Johnson isn't as fast firing as the M1 Grand, and during the heat of battle for a semi-automatic rifle, having a fast firing rifle is a lot. And that is what the M1 Grand has compared to the M1941 Johnson semi-automatic rifle. In my opinion, the Johnson is no way compared to the M1 Grand. It's not bad, but for the price of whatever they have, the M1 Grand is definitely worth it. And when I mean worth it, I mean it's really good. Not only can you buy the M1 Grand, you can also transfer it in three other campaigns, of which you have Normandy, of which you also have the Pacific, and you have essentially Tunisia, which is all amazing. The M1 Grand is my staple semi-automatic rifle. I love it so much because not only is it good, it's also very plausible for you to get, and it is very accurate at long range, that is, if you know where you're shooting, of course. But that said, the M1 Grand is one of the most worth it rifles in Enlisted because not only is it cheap, but it also kills and also is the only rifle that you should be getting for the Allies in the terms of the Americans. But that said, let's move on to the number one spot. In the number one spot we have the M1 Beretta and the reason why this is so good is the fact because that this thing has no recoil. And for Axis Tunisia, this is amazing. And when I mean amazing, this thing is borderline overpowered because the fact that it has 40 rounds, which is more than the Allies' 10. It also has the ability to fire, or fire relatively fast for its weapon, which is also amazing. And the fact that this thing does pretty decent damage and literally has no recoil is almost insanity. This thing is one of my most classified overpowered weapons, if you are willing to get it, which is wolf. I hope you do get it after watching this video because this is worth it. And when I mean worth it, I mean really worth it. This thing literally has the ability to just kill people like killing, chopping off trees. And when I mean chopping off trees, I mean chopping off trees using a bulldozer. Well, I guess you guys know what I'm talking about. But the M1 Beretta is really worth your money. And when I mean your money, I mean your silver orders because all of these weapons are free to play. Of course, there is a lot of interesting things about the M1 Breda in the sense that the M1 Breda is the fact that uh, the Allies do have the Thompson, so in terms of shooting, you're gonna have a harder time. But the fact that the M1 Breda can literally shoot people from half a mile away, half the map away, is almost amazing. It is the only SMG that I started with, enlisted with, and well, what I mean, started with. It is the only SMG that I used for Tunisia until you get the end. And when I mean the only SMG, I literally mean that because the Breda M1 is basically the only Breda weapon that you should be getting. Otherwise, you'll be getting the MP40, which is a downgrade in my opinion, and the OVP 1918, which is in some terms a downgrade. And you have the Breda M1934, which is sadly also a downgrade. Well, a downgrade in terms of self orders because it's basically the same thing, but why would you be getting a uh, different M1 Brita at a different level when you already have a regular M1 Brita. So, hence, just get the M1 Brita and you will be secure for almost until the late game. And this thing could actually carry you towards the late game. But that's it, that's all for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join Discord. Comment what weapon you use often. And that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join Discord. I'll see you in the next one.